In this video, we're going to take a look at Graf von Faber-Castell India Red. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion. Now, I have frequently said how red is not really a color for me. And this red, it can shade, which I don't care for in red inks. But this ink also gives a ton of color variation that makes it much better for me when I go get the much darker tones because then the shading is washed out and the color itself is beautiful. It's nice and dark as a red, but bright on the page. Now, I know that that sounds really weird to say that it's dark and bright, but I think you'll really see that throughout all of the writing, and you're seeing some of it here. I can enjoy that. I'm surprised how much I've actually enjoyed using this ink given the right pen to use it on, and sometimes the right paper. So even colors that you don't go for as your normal could show themselves to be really good inks to use. Especially since, while I don't see myself doing pages of writing in red ink, I do see myself making alterations or corrections and notes on the stuff that I've written. And a red that shows itself, as well as this one, I think would be very worthwhile. Now, while what you're seeing at the moment may not be the very best that this can do, it does get better. I guarantee it. I like to change things up by using a different pen each day. Today that pen is a Sailor, my first pen with a medium fine nib. It's inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. To see how I arrived at that opinion, let's take a look at the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the fine nib, we get no feather, no spread. We get that darker red that I was talking about with a nice bright tone, but not as dark as I would prefer. It shades, and it shades okay as an ink, but I don't care for my reds to shade. Just look at how different in tone the word R is compared to they. And incapable shades in and out of darker tones while it's writing. Again, normally this would be a very good thing for me, but this is a red, and like black inks, I don't want the shading here. And looking at this medium nib, it is much darker than the fine. It has no feather, it has no spread, it has no shade. It is gorgeous on the page. I was not expecting this when I was writing because I do my writing for the pen reviews before I do the writing for the ink reviews. So I hadn't seen this from a wetter medium pen and wow, look at that. Looking at the music nib, I had high hopes going in, but the music nib allowed it to shade. Now, we get a darker tone than the fine, not as dark as the medium. It has no feather, it has no spread, it does show some of the shading. So if you do want those darker tones and the shading, that wet music nib did it. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. 
To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 51A with a fine nib. A Jinhao X450 with a medium nib. A Noodler's Neponset with a music nib. The next writing sample is done on Leuchtturm 1917 paper. Looking at the fine nib, we get no feather, no spread, no shading. It would be, it's beautiful in its performance. I do wish it was a bit darker. Now, it is a lot darker than we got on the Clairefontaine. The absorbent paper helps, and the yellow, the uh, cream tone paper really helps to do that. I think it looks very good here. If this is a notebook I'm using, I can definitely see using this ink. Looking at the medium nib, it is much darker than we got with the fine. It has no feather. It has no spread. It has no shade. It is beautiful here. It looks so good, so dark. It's rich, and it's bright and easy to read on the page, yet doesn't hurt your eyes in any kind of a way. The music nib is about the same tone that we get with the medium quite a bit. It has no feather. It has no spread. Now, it does have shading. This music nib, for some reason, does allow shading to come out a bit more, which is kind of surprising, but the shape at the end of the nib really does allow it. So if you want that darker tone and some of the shading, you can get it with that. Looking at the back of the page, we see that we have normal amounts of ghosting and we got no bleeding. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The next writing sample is done on moleskin paper. Looking at the fine nib, we get no feather, no spread. We do get some shading. The most noticeable thing here is it is a much lighter red than we had on the Leuchtturm. It's light like it was on the Clairefontaine, and I'm not a fan of how this is looking here. It really is disappointing compared to the other papers. It's a result of how this paper's responding. Looking at the medium nib, there's no feather, no spread, no shading. It's a nice, consistent tone. It is a bit lighter than I would prefer this one to be. I think a little bit darker, and it would look really stand out amazing, where it just looks good here. The music nib has no feather, no spread. It does shade as this nib has been getting the inks to do. Again, we get the same darker tone that we had with the medium with some shading in lighter areas. So if that's really what you want out of your red, you can get it here without any kind of real difficulty.
Looking at the back of the page, we have a minimal amount of ghosting and we have no bleeding. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. And here we see the results of the resistance test. The next writing sample is done in a composition notebook. Looking at the fine nib, the first thing you really have to point out is this paper tends to dull an ink, and it did. Much lighter. It's a little lighter than we saw in the Clairefontaine, which looked good, but was a little lighter than I would prefer, and this is even lighter than that. It has no feather, it has no spread, it is shading fairly well in this case. I think you could use it here because I don't think it's screaming on the page and it can add to your notes in your lab notebook, just not really what me, I would want. Looking at the medium nib, it's got tiny feathers that are showing up but it's showing up in the word dirty, which I was having some problems with on the top line. And it's mostly where I backed up to make me wonder if it has to do with the amount of ink that went in that spot. Interesting to figure out if it's going to bleed. It's got no spread and it's got no real shading. Looking at the music nib, it is lighter than the medium, but it is a fairly consistent tone. It has no feather, it has no spread. It only has a few moments where a little bit of shading comes through. It looks a little washed out as a tone though. Looking at the back of the page, we get a normal amount of ghosting and we have no bleeding, not even in the spot where I went back and corrected a word and I thought I might get some. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Ackerman number 21. Here is Diamine Firestorm Red. Here is KWZ red number one. Here is Papier Plume red. The next writing sample is done in a Mead five star notebook. Looking at the fine nib, we have no feather, no spread, no shade. It's Darker than we had with the Clairefontaine. It's very easy to read. It's not bad at all. It's definitely a red. Not a distinctive red, but a red. The medium nib has tiny feathers that do occur on it here. They're really tiny. You have to really look to get them, but they are there. There's no spread and there's no shading. So if you overlook the fact that if you're really looking at the writing, you can see some tiny feathers, it's doing fairly well. The music nib has some of those same tiny feathers the medium did. It has no spread. It has no shading. And it is about the same tone as the medium. 
in the end, you're putting down more ink and I don't know that you're getting an increased effect for it. Looking at the back of the page, we see a normal amount of ghosting. And like I said, the music nib puts down more ink and you see it went deeper into the paper. But none of this came through and touched the page underneath. So there is no bleeding. While it's nice to find other inks in the same color family, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here is a turquoise ink by Colorverse, their Season 2 Gravity Wave. Here is a blue ink by Noodler's Legal Blue. Here is a green ink by Platinum Green. Here is a black ink by Robert Oster Green Black. If you'd prefer different complement colors, then there's links to those different playlists down in the description. Or you can click on my face. That'll take you to my channel page. Then click on the playlist tab. Scrolling down, you'll be able to see all of the playlists that are here on the channel. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the fine nib, we get some tiny feathers. Actually, the feathers are really small and incredibly under control. There is the tiniest bit of spread, but that too is under control. It's doing very well. Though the tone is quite a bit lighter than I would prefer, it's very distinctly a red and not a problem here. The medium is much darker than the fine. It does have feathering that in areas makes it look a little blurry and quite frequently. It does have quite a bit of spread and... Ooh. <laughs> it doesn't shade. It's just there. I guess if you had to, you could. Just apologize to the rest of the world for doing it. The music nib is lighter than the medium, which was surprising being that it's so much wetter. It does have feather, it does have spread, it does not shade, it's simply there on the page. It's red that I'm not liking here. Looking at the back of the page, we had nothing that came through and touched the page underneath. Although it did get very deep into the paper, it never actually bled all the way through. And the ghosting we get is truly normal. So what nib and pen do I think is going to give the best writing experience with this ink? In choosing the pen, it gives a lot of uh, color that I enjoy. I just don't want that shading. And... Seeing the tones that it gives, its darkest tones looked really good. I want those solid lines with that darker tone. Now, to get that, I would go for a wet medium or a wet fine nib. Because for me, I want a dark solid line with the red and I think that's how I'm going to get it. But keep in mind, if you enjoyed the shading that this gave, that Neponset, so a wetter music nib, or perhaps a medium flow broad, really, uh, a wet to medium flow broad, will probably give you the shading with the darker tone and be able to look really good. So it's about what you want, but I want a wet medium or wet fine. Thanks for watching.